Hello and welcome to City Corner. I'm your host today, Todd Blackstock. Our special guest in studio is Greg Haglund. He's a concert promoter and worldwide marketing genius. He'll join us today. We'll talk about concerts coming to St. Louis and the music industry as a whole. So stay with us for City Corner, coming up next on STL TV. And welcome to the show. Greg Haglund, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm looking at your bio, and uh, I mean, you've been producing and doing things in the record business for almost 50 years now, and you've been around the block. One of your crowning achievements, I believe, would be the U2 concert at halftime in 2002 when the St. Louis Rams were playing the New England Patriots, and it was Tom Brady's coming out party, and uh, Everybody seemed to be patriotic that day, but uh, that was a heck of a halftime show. And could you fill us in on how it all went down and some of the behind the scenes work with that great experience? Well, it really was. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity to work with the NFL and uh, to work with you two. Uh, what happened was we originally had uh, Janet Jackson scheduled and due to some just technical problems, it was unable to do it. So we went to uh, Las Vegas where U2 was performing and we met with the band, uh, and uh, it was kind of a surreal evening. Uh, the band came into the into the green room and introduced themselves as, you know, I'm Edge, the guitar player, I'm Bono, the lead singer, as if nobody knew. And uh, we talked to them about the opportunity to do the halftime show, and they were extremely excited and honored to be able to do it. So we began that day, began planning what would the, be the Super Bowl show would be uh, and uh, getting ready for rehearsals, et cetera. How many hours of rehearsals and setup and things like that does it take to put on, you know, a 10 or 15 minute production like that? Because, you know, they come across as flawless, but there's a lot of behind the scenes work. You know, with the, with the halftime show, what you, what you really have is so much time, prep time in advance of getting to the city where the halftime show is because you have such very little precious time, um, we had we were able to get a hold, get to the field on the Wednesday before the Sunday, uh, because different nights, different people have use of the field, so it's very precious. But we had it for about four hours, and we rehearsed it, uh, putting the stage together, putting the band on stage, the band performed a couple of the songs, and uh, so, but, Man hours and women hours and people hours is, is hundreds and hundreds of hours go into it. The actual rehearsal time on, on the field was probably four or five hours. That's it. So what goes through your mind when it's, when it's all going down? And, you know, the fans are out there, you know, the game's happening, right. all the pageantry surrounding it. Well, you know, what's your moment like? It's, it's quite a moment. I was, you know, as the executive producer, I fortunately was not pushing any buttons. Uh, I was standing on the half on the 50 yard line with my headset on and just listening to it all come down and watching it all happen and it went flawlessly and but we probably had I was fortunate enough to put together probably the best crew of production people in the United States period. Uh, we had the opportunity we were a part of uh, Clear Channel Entertainment which is now Live Nation so we were able to draw from some of the best people around the the country and, the, and around the world, actually, for uh, the different pr production positions that we had to fill. Now, talking about Live Nation, you've held many roles, you know, vice president roles, marketing directors, all kinds of roles with Clear Channel, um, and you've made a career out of it. Prior to that, you were a buyer. So what I understand is, were you the guy that, like, decided what albums made the cut to go to the retail chains? Right. When I first got into the business and was, a, was made a buyer, we were the largest buyer of records in the country. It was a company called J.L. Marsh Heiliger Brothers, which later became known as Pickwick. And um, uh, I was a national buyer, so yeah, I would be buying new releases and deciding how many would go to our uh, stores that we owned or stores that we serviced. Uh, and it was a big, big decisions that had to be made. Wow. It looks like uh, you're a promotion director at 
Motown, A&M Records, some other labels. You helped develop groups like Heart, Blondie, the Moody Blues. Right. Um, those are some pretty big names. And, right. You know, when I'm thinking, I think of all of them. I think of Heart as they were tremendous when they, you know, Dreamboat Annie came out and everything. But then, you know, there was a little bit of a lull there for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the opportunity to work concerts and run spotlights at the Show Me Center in Cape Girardeau. Mm -hmm. And Heart came in a comeback tour in like the 80s. Mm -hmm. And they were absolutely terrific. Mm -hmm. And could you maybe share a few stories about maybe uh, helping out Heart and the Moody Blues? Well, I was still in the record buying department when Hart uh, came out and they were a new band on a brand new label, Mushroom Records. So we were all a little guarded in terms of what was gonna happen with the record. It was a great record. You could hear that it was a great record, but that doesn't necessarily mean that radio was gonna play it and people would be purchasing it. And we were watching it very closely. And I remember being in the office and the LA office called, I was in Minneapolis at the time, and the LA office called and they ordered 50,000 copies um, so I called the owner of the record company and uh, ordered 50,000 records to be drop shipped to our LA office. And he started to tear up actually and said, can I call you back in a few minutes? And uh, it was the beginning of the band taking off. Well, that's amazing. Congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah. I'm sure they're very appreciative of it. Yeah. And as I moved on in the record business, I went from being a buyer and then that's where the reason I moved to St. Louis was to be a promotion person. And I worked the Heart Records and the Moody Blues and some different label, different labels as well. Yeah, tell us about the Moody Blues. I mean, one of the all-time greatest classic rock bands ever from England. How did you end up uh, collaborating with them? Well, we did, you know, they were obviously a well-known and a very established band by the time I got on the scene. But uh, we had some great opportunities and did some great promotions with them. and. Uh, got tremendous airplay on their albums all across the Midwest. Uh, but, uh, you know, Justin Hayward and the rest of the guys, we still work with Justin Hayward. Steve Lippman produces him quite often around the country and speci spe specifically St. Louis. And, uh, you know, he's just a gentleman to work with and always been great to work with the Moody Blues. You know, I see you worked with Blondie. Mm -hmm. uh, that must, must have been quite an experience. I, I think immediately of like Studio 54 in New York because mm -hmm. when all that was going down in like the late 70s and uh, it, it was so much fun, I think of Blondie. Did you ever make it to Studio 54? Because I'm thinking of, of a record executive. Right. You know, you probably got to hang out with some of the bands and musicians sure. and did you ever uh, take a trip through that place? No, we never made it to Studio 54, but we did used to hang out with the bands in some pretty unusual places over the years. You know, we would be in some towns and find the hottest club in town and end up, uh, you know, being being treated like VIPs if we were with the band. So I understand you still do some work with Peter Frampton. 1976, Frampton Comes Alive comes out. It's one of the greatest all-time live records everywhere uh, with Show Me The Way, Do You Feel Like We Do. That, you know, that broke major ground. And uh, Peter was was huge. And then all of a sudden, he did this movie called uh, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band with the Bee Gees and him. And it seemed like Aerosmith made cameos and Alice Cooper, Steve Martin. But somehow, Peter Frampton kind of got a, a little bit of a bad rap from that movie. What were your thoughts? Well, I thought it was a great movie. I really did. It was a pop, pop culture. Uh, uh, I, thought, I thought everybody did a great job in it. And Peter's been, you know, when I was in the record business, I was a buyer for A&M Records, and uh, uh, those were some pretty heady days when that album came out, uh, Frampton Comes Alive. And, uh, and we've done dates with him subsequently, both his contemporary productions and Steve Lippman Presents, uh, another true gentleman in the business. I mean, he made a great move from Humble Pie to Solo, mm -hmm. you know, just about the right time there. Growing up, we used to go to Peach's Records and on Manchester Road and Ballin and Bayer Records. And we used to get our concert tickets at the record stores too. Mm -hmm. And we would do this thing where we would get a line ticket the day right. before. That was like the key. Right. And we got like line tickets to Eric Clapton one year and um, we get second row and ninth row and 11th row. We'd skip school, we get it. And he ended up not even making the concert because he got sick. Mm -hmm. But if you look back in the day when you would get the paper tickets you would go wait in line. I remember waiting at, you know, a, a camping out 
for tickets to baseball games, concerts. Mm -hmm. It's a whole new world now. They don't do it like that anymore. No, no it's, uh, uh, it's, it's milliseconds it takes now to purchase tickets. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a much different game than going over to the Orange Julius store, that's for sure. <laughs> do you think uh, that's better for the consumer in the long run? Because, I mean, it seems like the young people, they just pull up their phones, they get their tickets, and some of the older people, they get they got to think about it for a minute and, right. and get a little bit of help and service. Right. I think eventually they'll come around to it, but how has the transition been? Oh, it's been great. I mean, you're able to sell, you know, thousands and thousands of tickets in a relatively short period of time. It's much easier for the consumer now. Uh, go online, either on a computer or, like you said, on their phone. Uh, makes it much easier. Um, you know, it's, a, it's still technology, and there's still problems with it from time to time. But overall, it's, it's, it's a much better way of distributing tickets to shows and events. Well, you've got a lot of concerts coming to town. We want to talk about that. So let's sure. take a quick break, and we'll come back with Greg Haglin uh, from Haglin Marketing and Promotions. We'll talk about some great shows coming to town and some more about the music business. Stay with us. Have you seen that piece on the Tiffany neighborhood on STL TV? No. Let me show you. My wife and I were looking for homes. We lived in the city all of her life, and there's just a, a different energy when you're in, in the city. Keep up with what's happening in your neighborhood. Watch STL TV. Be in the know. Donating to a pet's medical care is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. What I love about St. Louis is the 79 unique neighborhoods and 108 beautiful city parks, including Forest Park, which is actually larger than Central Park in New York, and the gorgeous Tower Grove Park right here. And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. So come and experience St. Louis. I'm an ex-drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. So when you are okay, 
or not okay, I'll take care of you. Hey, welcome back to City Corner. Our special guest, Greg Haglund from Haglund Marketing and Promotion, is kind enough to join us here to talk music industry. You know, things in the world, especially the United States, were going so well. Sporting events, concerts were just doing great. Then COVID hit. And all of a sudden, man, I mean, concerts, that was could bosh. Nothing going on. All these bands and, you know, the big time bands, they were okay. You know, they've made their mark, they've made their money, and they're, they're touring just to have fun and maybe pay for their castles. Right. Um, but a lot of the mid-range and smaller bands and the behind-the-scenes people were really hurt. Mm -hmm. A lot of the concert venues, and you were uh, with a group that did a lot to help people in the music industry survive and get through that hard time. Would you, you know, maybe walk us through some of the things you did? Sure. Yeah, I'm a board member of a group called St. Louis Classic Rock Preservation Society which is dedicated to preserving the history of, of pop music and rock and roll and music in general in the St. Louis market. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we first had realized that when COVID hit was that the people in the live mu music business, that uh, from bartenders to lighting operators, to sound people, to production people, to local bands, to venues, were all completely out of business. And uh, we came up with a program. Uh, we worked with Hubbard Broadcasting with KC and WIL and uh, The Arch and The Point to come up with a program called Keep Live Alive. And we created a 90-minute uh, uh, television special um, with different artists hosted by Sammy Hagar. And, uh, uh, and it, was a, it was a great... Uh, great show, and we raised over $100,000, which were then issued in grants of $1,000 to people that had been put out of work uh, in the business uh, due to COVID. So how is it coming around now? You know, the shows are back open. People don't have to wear the masks anymore. What's the state of the live music industry right now? It's great. It's very healthy. It's back. It's back. Uh, almost too much sometimes, <laughs> it seems like. Uh, but you've got new venues popping up, uh, the factory out in Chesterfield, uh, the city winery down in the, uh, down, downtown. So you've got a lot of uh, excitement now to you know, see bands that you missed during COVID, uh, bands that are making farewell tours. It's, it's back and it's very healthy. Well, you got a lot of concerts coming up at the factory. I know one of them, October 8th, Three Dog Night, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, what a uh, what a fun band from like 1969 to 74. They had a bunch of top 10 hits. Yep. They were selling out, you know, concerts everywhere, touring. And they were the, one of the most popular groups I listened to as a kid. Mm -hmm. And you never hear them in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame discussion. I know they didn't write their own songs, but they had a, a powerful at least six years. Oh, no, they were a phenomenal uh, pop rock band and we're pl we're pleased to be able to bring them back to St. Louis for uh, for a great concert. Who are some of the other bands coming to the factory? I think uh, you just released one like today, a uh, stand-up. Actually, it's going to be at Sheldon. You released something that's going to go on October 1st. It's called Board Teachers and it's made up of teachers from junior high and high school and grade school and they talk about in a very humorous setting uh, things that you just can't make up that happen at school. And uh, it's been very successful. Steve Lipman, uh, we produced a couple of shows in Iowa last month, and uh, we've got a couple more coming up with St. Louis and Sioux Falls. And uh, it's a very, very funny show. And it's, uh, uh, like I said, it's, it's about teachers talking about all the funny things that happen in school. Oh, I bet it's hilarious. Yeah. Also at the show and on September 7th, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Yeah, it's always great to, you know, and it's been a long time since they've been in St. Louis. So uh, I'm thrilled to be a part of that show. And Steve Littman uh, uh, brought them back to the Sheldon, which is a tremendous venue to see them in. And uh, so we're, we're excited to be a part of that as well. Then you got a few over at the factory on September 20th. Who's live anyway? 
That's made up from the TV show, uh, and it's uh, a hilarious show. It's selling extremely well, uh, and uh, uh, that will be uh, that will be a sellout for sure. We talked about three hundred nine. Then one week later, October thirteenth, get the lead out. Could that be possibly a Led Zeppelin? It's a Led Zeppelin tribute, and it's a phenomenal version of of uh, being able to see. Uh, you since we'll never get to see Led Zeppelin again. This is as close as you're going to get. And we've already played them once in St. Louis, and they got rave reviews. So Steve brought them back again to play the factory. And you got the Little River Band coming October the Little 21st. River Band is always a St. Louis favorite. Uh, they've played here. You know, I remember playing everywhere from the old arena to the Fox Theater. And uh, we brought them back to the Intimate uh, Factory for one show. And... Uh, It'll be great to see them again in St. Louis. It looks like you're doing some collaboration with a great Steve Martin and Martin Short. Steve does uh, several dates around the country with uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short. Uh, and uh, does they do incredibly, incredibly well. So we're looking forward to those concerts coming to St. Louis. Um, one of the biggest, I guess it's not a concert, but theatrical productions maybe worldwide, is Blue Man Group. Right. And you're an executive producer, or were, of Blue Man Group. You probably helped get it up and running. What is it with Blue Man Group that made it so widely successful? Because you see this guy, a bunch of guys in blue, running around, jumping around, and throwing stuff, and doing fun things. But, uh, you know, what's the big attraction? I think, I think because they have such a wide appeal. And they're not a kid's show, but kids love them and appreciate them. And teenagers love them. Uh, Mom and dad love the subtle humor uh, that's in these things. So you've you've got a whole depth of people that want to go see them. And, uh, you know, they're so innocent. And uh, um, they're they're just, you know, in terms of what they do, in terms of the music that they perform, of course, they have the top, top musicians behind them in bands. So you get kind of a mix of an excellent musical concert and a theatrical presentation. It's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a phenomenon to see. So Blue Man Group is it's tearing it up all across the country. There's different residencies, I understand. It's not just like one touring group. It's like a bunch of them that go all around the place. Yeah, and you know, they have, they have sit down, what they call sit down shows in Boston, Chicago, Las Vegas, Orlando, and then overseas in Europe and Asia. So, you know, it's been a couple of years since we did the world tour. Steve Lippman and I were partners along with a couple of other people. And uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was really phenomenal. We were able to take them all across the world, uh, South America and uh, uh, Canada and Europe and Asia. And uh, it was amazing to see the you know, the amount of people that really love the Blue Man Group. Greg, you seem to be in on all the cutting the cutting edge technology and, you know, springboard into the future. Televisa is a, turning into a big deal, a Spanish-speaking, Latin-oriented television, probably the biggest Spanish-speaking television company in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, you were in on the beginning of it. With migration like it is, it would seem like brilliant marketing. Yeah, it's been a few years since I was involved with them, but yes, we, uh, as part of Clear Channel, uh, we had a joint venture with Televisa called uh, Vivalo, which means live, and uh, we did shows in the United States and uh, Mexico and South America, both pop and uh, uh, Spanish-speaking attractions, and it's it's a big business. It's Because, uh, uh, again, depth of people, there's just more than just Spanish-speaking people that like this music. So uh, you can do some serious numbers in terms of attendance with, with some of these bands. Did we mention you getting into the uh, a Hall of Fame recently? I was, yes, thank you for mentioning that. The St. Louis Classic Rock Preservation Society. Yeah, I wanted to get back to yeah, that. Yeah, they, uh, they inducted me into the Hall of Fame. Uh, so I am now, uh, uh, have a have a wooden plaque that uh, sits proudly in my, uh, in my collection of other memorabilia in my home. If someone wants to get involved with the St. Louis Classic Rock Preservation Society, what would they do? Well, we were working on trying to figure out our next outreach program, and we will com communicate on our Facebook page uh, if we look for volunteers, or uh, uh, that's the easiest way to find us is 
uh, through Keep Live Alive or St. Louis Classic Rock Preservation Society on Facebook. So you've been with what used to be Riverport Amphitheater mm -hmm. since the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's now Hollywood Amphitheater or Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. Things started out so beautiful with a Steve Winwood concert. I think there was a comedian or something in between. And then a couple of weeks later, here comes Guns N' Roses. I worked for Guns N' Roses at the Show Me Center and they opened up for Alice Cooper. They were well, not so hot. Came back with Aerosmith on a, I think a drug-free tour and they were just great. Mm -hmm. And we came to see this concert at Riverport and I was kind of far up in the, in the grass with a bunch of people. And you know, we were partying and talking and stuff. So we missed some of the things. We saw Axel diving into the crowd that day, and you were probably sitting right there nearby. Right. Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, I had been busy doing business downtown that day, so I came directly to the show, uh, saw the beginning of the show. I was sitting in our box with the uh, co-owner of the company, and I actually left uh, to go home, and it had been a long day, and uh, I'd seen enough of the show, so I left, and... Uh, I remember getting a call about one o'clock in the morning uh, that said, Greg, uh, you need to get dressed, take a shower, and come back out to Riverport. We've had a little incident. So the, uh, the famous uh, civil disobedience riot at Riverport Amphitheater with, uh, with Guns N' Roses. I don't, was, I don't know if people realize how big of a deal that was because CNN, they had their helicopters uh, hovering over that. Uh, I had a get-together before that. I had people showing back up at my apartment at like 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, from that show. I still ended up with a blanket I had as a kid from that show. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. Yeah, it was, uh, as it turns out, it, uh, it wasn't as bad in terms of the, the, the building. We, you know, we lost some trees and, and some seats, but it was a pretty sturdy building. It, uh, it took it. Guns N' Roses probably lost a lot more than that. Yes, they did. <laughs> yes, they did. Probably three, four hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, sure. Greg, uh, any final thoughts? Uh, how to get a hold of tickets and uh, everything you do with Steve Littman and KC95 and all that cool stuff? Well, I think the, the easiest way to stay abreast of all the shows that Steve has got promoting is go to stevelittmanpresents.com uh, or uh, you can go to, uh, he does all the shows at the Fox Theater as well. So you can go to the Fox website as well to check the pop concerts that are being presented by Steve there as well. We appreciate it. Well, Greg, thanks a lot for joining us on City Corner. Thank you very much. Well, that's our show for today. We'd like to thank Greg for joining us. We'd like to thank Julie Lally from Inside PR. We'd like to thank you for watching City Corner on STL TV. Experience St. Louis.